welcome to the environmental department at Wessex Archaeology in Salisbury. Uh, I'm Jenny and I'm going to be um, going through some of the processes today um, that we go through in order to retrieve the material that we're interested in here, particularly in order to be able to um, reconstruct the environments in which the people from the past lived. Um, how we're able to do that is that our site staff bring us back um, buckets of soil from archaeological sites that they work on and this is what they look like. This sea of buckets here is to do, um, there's many different sites here and we know where everything is. We have a database that tells us where everything is so we can go straight to the site straight away. Um, each bucket should have at least three different numbers which tells us exactly where that um, soil sample has come from. So we have the site code which is usually at the top we have another um, set of numbers which, is in ra which are in round brackets and that tells us the actual deposit, so like the pit fill or the um, post hole or, or the layer. And then we have a third number which is in like a diamond and that is the sample number, so that puts exactly where that sample, where that, that um, material has come from. What we do with that is we put it in a tank of water, so we want to get rid of all the so as much soil as possible and just identify what's left. The site that we're working on at the moment is a little bit different in that it's a clay site and clay is particularly difficult to break down. So what we need is the help of hydrogen peroxide. It helps our fingers and it also helps to um, not damage any archaeological material that we might have to put a bit of pressure on um, with our own fingers. I'll just show you. So this basically is what we get. We can get a lump like this big solid lump of like clay. That's how it starts. We add hydrogen peroxide and put some goggles on because it actually it can sting if it gets your skin, if it gets into your eyes. It can be very damaging. So just put a little drop. And it will in, you'll see that it instantly start to fizz. This is the same um, I'll just mix it in a little bit. This is the same sample, so it's a three bucket sample of the same number. And this is one that I soaked earlier just to show you the difference. You can see how the bubbles are now and it's gone a lot more moussey inside. So you've got the solid here and then this is what happens when we use the peroxide. Okay. This is actually a different sample. So what we do now, if I just talk you through the tank first. We have a tank and we have a bin full of water and they're both connected by a pump. The pump will then just rotate the water around so we're recycling the water as much as possible. But after, after a while, we have to empty it out and completely start again. I'm just going to wash this one because I'm using a different sample so I don't want to contaminate the sample. And now what we need to do is we need to get rid of all the excess soil to see what's left. I'm going to pour this in here. And just mix this up slightly. This is quite a charcoal rich uh, sample. So it's going to get a bit noisy in a minute. I'm just trying to break up any excess soil that the peroxide didn't break down. It seems to have done a great job. Okay, I'm going to put the pump on now. So it's going to get a little noisy. So they'll bring the water up. So I'm opening the valve, which opens it from here. So what basically is happening is that all the lighter environmental material should float to the top and go into, and we'll catch it here. And this is what we call the flot. Sometimes it's not very helpful and it won't always float by itself. So we need to, we need to help it a bit. Yeah, see, this is very charcoal rich, and this is what we call the floss, the stuff that floats. And this is the stuff that we're interested in. I mean, this is obviously charcoal, but like some of the smaller stuff may contain like um, 
charred grain, charred seeds, anything like that. It's not something that we can necessarily see with the eye right now, but it's certainly something that we'll be able to identify later. In this tank is the larger stuff like stones and any artifacts like bone, pottery, uh, flint tools, anything like this. And that will get that will get saved as well. And that will go to the um, our artifact specialists, whereas this stuff will stay here and go to the environmental specialists. That's a brilliant one. Okay. Turn this off. What we do with it then is we will put it into trays and everything will be dried. The environmental material will dry a lot slower than the like the stuff from the big stuff, the residue here. You may be able to the label goes in everything. So again we have the three numbers and they stay everywhere all the time. This will be folded up and will look like this. And then the stuff from here will go into trays like this and then they are dried.